Frightened by the upcoming battle, the Seekers looked at the Wyvern in the dungeon. A scream escaped from one of the Seekers' mouths in horror. The main character, swallowing saliva, looked in panic at the strong monster that they had to defeat. Horror was hidden in the character's eyes. A wyvern of incredible size bent over a group of seekers preparing to strike. People, amazed by the size of the dragon, fell into a stupor. While the men stood in fear, the fragile but brave girl drew her sword, ready to engage in battle with an enemy several times stronger than her. She sincerely wanted to protect her comrade, but the trembling that ran through her body paralyzed the girl. The heroic guy stood up in front of his brave partner, but the more experienced comrade decided to fight the wyvern in battle, asking him not to get into trouble with his comrades. Liam, using his skill, assessed the enemy. It turned out that the wyvern, when using a fireball, was capable of firing up to five projectiles in a row. The main character loudly warned his comrades to avoid the attack of the dungeon monster, followed by a fireball. Liam was walking down the street when, not far from him, two colleagues were loudly discussing the reward for the killed monster from which a very valuable artifact fell out. As it turned out, one of the men was clearly lucky with the class. The main character looked sadly at the two men, carried away by an interesting conversation. It's a pity that the character is just an appraiser. The guy noticed his cheap phone sticking out of his shirt pocket. A notification arrived. His account had a negligible amount of funds for subsistence. Fifty years ago in Tokyo, people lived their peaceful, secluded, quiet lives. They made plans for the future and dreamed of something of their own raised children and got dogs, traveled and conquered peaks. Suddenly their attention was captured by something that they had not seen before. The surprised residents looked up from their thoughts and all, as one turned to look at the source of the noise. Straight out of the ground, with incredible power, destroying all the houses around, the first dungeon, previously unknown to the inhabitants, appeared. The monsters that escaped mercilessly killed the people. From that very moment, all life was turned upside down. Each person received a certain class. The inhabitants became seekers and began to exterminate the monsters of the dungeons. In the dungeons, people began to collect various artifacts that fell out of defeated monsters, one of which were class books. By touching this book, people of a certain class could awaken in themselves a new power that was previously beyond their control. The seekers became stronger thanks to these special artifacts. All classes had different powers, and thanks to their superhuman skills, people could explore dungeons and fight monsters protecting the city from breakout. However, our main character had a special power. He could evaluate opponents, clearly seeing their weaknesses and strengths. This information helped change the course of the battle for the better. Liam, having no attacking force, always stood in the forefront, assessing the monsters that were ready to strike. The character warned his comrades about the upcoming attack. The monster, looking with its red eyes, swung in order to damage its opponents and prevent them from attacking it. The monster's blows were especially strong. The guy steadfastly used his ability, without running away from fear, in front of him stood a wooden golem, a creature created from wood with strength D. Its weak point was its head. The monster turned out to be vulnerable to attacks by fire magic. The creature strikes the ground with one of its limbs. The shockwave knocks the team down. The golem is strong, but slow. It has only one skill in reserve. The main character boldly grabs his sword. He clearly knows what needs to be done. Since the golem is made of wood, it can be cut. With a deft movement of his hand, Liam releases his sword, ready for battle. Although the guy does not have any special attack skills, he boldly rushed into battle. One blow and the dungeon monster is cut into pieces. It will no longer be able to strike back, as long as it surrenders. The defeated wooden golem was left without legs. He could not get up. Apparently, this is the end of his worthless, meaningless life. The character delivers the final blow with his sword to the golem's weakest point, the head, breaking the red eye into fragments. Since the main character is not endowed with much strength, he needs to put all his weight on the sword in order to finish off the wooden enemy. It was an intense battle. The main character had to put in a lot of effort to achieve victory without special attacking skills. Exhausted by the battle, he falls to the ground. The guy's efforts were not in vain because experience points were credited and the level of the main character increased. Having come to his senses, the character remembers that he needs to stop the recording on his smartphone the guy has hatched a plan on which he can make money. After watching the exciting video, the main character was glad that everything he needed was included in the video. He was lucky that the phone didn't break. Having finished with the video, Liam decided to check how much he was awarded for killing the golem. It turned out to be only 30 points. The main character was deep in thought that his skill had low attack potential. 
an almost useless skill. Too unique to be useful. The other guys have some cool abilities that can make you a lot of money. Using the skill of assessing people, you can see their characteristics. But spying without the person's permission is contrary to moral standards. The character's attention is drawn to the sound emanating from the once living golem. He left an artifact behind. A sliver of the wooden golem bounced off the body of the wooden carcass with a dull sound and landed on the stone floor of the dungeon. Using the assessment skill, you can find out comprehensive information about people or monsters. The main character picked up the artifact and examined it more closely. It's common to find a score sheet in dungeons that tells information about monsters, making Liam's skill even more useless. One such sheet can be bought for a thousand yen. It turns out that services for a skill cost no more than a thousand. The guy put the artifact in his backpack, thinking about life. People often do not want anyone to look at their items or found magical artifacts, which is why they prefer to take evaluation sheets. As he climbed the stairs of the capital's Seekers Guild, Liam reflected that as a child he dreamed of becoming a Seeker. But with such a useless skill, it would be difficult for him to simply survive. Going up to the guild office, the character said that he had come about the assessment. Here he earns extra money using his skill. Voices were heard behind the main character's back, clearly condemning him, loud enough that you didn't even need to eavesdrop to hear what they were saying about him. One voice said that the appraiser can only evaluate objects or creatures without using evaluation sheets. It is of zero use. After which the second voice asked to speak more quietly because they might be heard. While doing his work, Liam thought that he would still finish everyone off and would definitely become a first-class seeker. But for now, he was sitting here in the guild appraising items. Now he had mithril ore in his hands. The boss, a young woman about 30 years old, pointed out where to carry the box of artifacts. The guild often has to examine items dropped by dungeon monsters. This is where the main character's power becomes a little useful. He charges 700 yen for one item, which is cheaper than the score sheet. Today he earned 7,700 yen in one hour. But you need to take into account the fact that it takes about 10 hours to restore mana. So in fact it comes out to 7,700 yen in 11 hours. The character walked home with the thoughts that a month had already passed since he became a seeker. His main income is part-time work in the guild. And when he has some mana left, Liam often helps out by working at the reception. Having finally returned home, the guy sat down at the computer and eagerly began processing the video he shot on his phone today. After looking at the blurry monster, the main character came up with a description for his first video. It contains a detailed description of the slime and then tells the strategy for killing it. Liam was tormented by the thought that appraisers could not become full-fledged searchers, so he decided to prepare himself a safety net in the form of a YouTube channel. Excited by the uploading of the first video, the main character could not sleep for a long time Thinking about how unique his videos would be, yes, you can find a lot of information about monsters on the internet. But has anyone recorded a video with the optimal strategy for killing dungeon creatures? As soon as Liam fell asleep, he was awakened by a familiar feeling. The character opened his eyes. A notification, his level had increased. The main character was lying on the bed and trying to comprehend what was happening. His thoughts were confused in his head. Liam was thinking about how this was even possible. Maybe it was just a dream. As soon as the thought subsided, the guy sat down to think about what was happening. His warm foot fell on the cold wooden floor. He needed to calm down first. Liam decided to check his stats. His pupils suddenly got bigger. Level 3 actually got bigger. The character tried to fit this thought into his head. He thought how this was possible. He raised the third level without killing a single monster. Was it really a bug? Perhaps there are answers on the internet in order to test this theory. The guy sat down at the computer. There is not a single mention of such a situation on the internet. Perhaps Liam was the first to stumble upon this bug. Since it was not possible to find out how the level rose, the main character decided to check what was wrong with his YouTube channel. The video received more than 30 views in one evening. Not bad for the first time, the guy decided to upload six more videos today. The next day, the character woke up again from a notification. Looking at the characteristics, he was pleasantly surprised. Level 5, Liam thought about how this could happen because he did nothing. There was a notification on the phone that the user had left a comment under the video. The first comment, the guy immediately opened YouTube. Evans thanked the author of the video because thanks to him, the commentator was able to defeat his first monster, which means that Liam's assessment skill was still useful to someone. In total, the channel received more than a thousand views. Here the main character was struck by the idea that he was awarded experience points for each person who defeated the monster after watching the video. For example, 
healers receive experience for healing the wounds of a comrade who kills a monster. So the system takes into account that the creature was killed with the help of this person. As a result, the points are fairly divided between two people, and helping a friend is taken into account by the system. In other words, users watch Liam's video and kill monsters, and then the system gives experience to the main character for helping. The guy immediately realized that raising the level this way was much more effective than fighting monsters one-on-one -on -one alone. The main character decided that he needed to conduct an experiment. Having collected everything he needed, he left his room and went to shoot new videos. In front of the entrance to the dungeon, located not far from the house, there is a sign warning of danger. Only seekers can enter there, of course. There are many sites that provide information about monsters, but they mainly describe mid-level monsters. Newcomers want to know more about weak monsters. New creatures met on Liam's path. The wheezing of zombies echoed throughout the dungeon and the skeleton, rattling its bones, was preparing to attack the seeker. Turning on the camera, the main character drew his sword and assessed his opponents. They have a low level so it will be easy to deal with them. Skeletons have no weapons, but their fingers are sharp enough to disembowel a person. So beginners need to be careful. Zombies deliver strong blows but take a long time to swing. In addition, their thinking is primitive and therefore it is quite easy to dodge an attack. Ghosts are only susceptible to magic, so if a beginner does not have it, then it is better to run away as quickly as possible. Fortunately, ghosts are quite slow, so running away from them will not be difficult. Finally, Liam uploaded the videos he shot to his channel. All that was left was to wait for views and skill upgrades. After some time, the guy was literally overwhelmed with experience points, causing his level to rise to 10. The theory was confirmed, the main character was filled with joy. However, it was necessary to rejoice more quietly, because Liam was in the guild office, the guy's rejoicing attracted the attention of those around him. The dissatisfied boss asked to be quieter because the main character was disturbing the other's work. In the comments they write that thanks to the new camera, the video quality has become much better. It's not in vain that the guy spent money on it. Liam has a new skill. This is an inventory. It allows you to put things in a special space with the volume of a large cardboard box. Not enough, but for the first time it will do. It's a shame that the characteristics are growing slowly. At this rate you will need to work hard to shoot videos and raise many levels to become a worthy seeker. In addition, subscribers ask me to edit the videos, since they are hard to watch. Some text would be helpful. The guy doesn't know any editors, but he can't afford to do it for money. And there are too few subscribers on the channel to enable monetization. Suddenly, Liam received a notification about a good part-time job in the dungeon with a high salary. A week later, the main character went for an interview for a new part-time job at the Guild of the Orif Lords. In front of the character stood a tall, beautiful building. An exciting feeling captured Liam. A drop of sweat flowed down his cheek, gathering all his will into a fist. The guy finally entered the building. The advertisement spoke about the work of a squire. In other words, a vacancy for a porter. Having approached the reception, the seeker turned to the girl who worked there and asked where to go for part-time work. A smiling brunette with a pleasant voice immediately understood who had come to them and asked them to follow her. The sound of the administrator's heels could be heard throughout the corridor. Meetings were taking place in glass-walled offices. Everyone was busy with work. The main character was thinking that the guild was going to conduct a large-scale foray, given that they hired a seeker of the 10th level. Most likely, the expedition would not be dangerous. The girl accompanied Liam to the meeting room and went about her business. Without hesitation, the guy opened the door and entered the office. Several impressive-looking seekers turned to look at him. A chill ran down the guy's back. There were only thugs there. The main character thought that he needed to say hello as quickly as possible so that he would not be considered a rude person. The character bowed low and said that his name was Liam. He would be their bearer for today and asked for love and favor. With his actions, the character only attracted the attention of the seekers more. After looking with a condemning look, they returned to discussing their affairs. Embarrassed by this situation, Liam pressed himself against the door and dreamed that all this would soon end, which is what he only expected. Suddenly, the guy's thoughts were interrupted by a man who approached him, greeted him and thanked him for the main character coming. The head of the Orf Lord's Guild, Jensen, stood in front of Liam. The captain extended his hand for a handshake and said that he was counting on the seeker. In the center of the hall, there was an incredibly large oval table. The meeting was about to begin. Everyone present began to take their seats. Lost in his thoughts, Liam was thinking that the hall was designed for 30 people. It would be more logical to sit somewhere in the corner, when suddenly the guy ran into a cute girl. Not expecting such a turn of events, 
the blonde seeker fell to the floor and was clearly embarrassed by the situation. The main character immediately began to apologize, because he was not looking where he was going. Liam extended his hand to the blonde and asked if she had hurt herself. The girl raised her big, green eyes to the guy. Her cheeks turned pink from embarrassment. She took the character's hand, said that she was fine, and asked for forgiveness. From the accent, Liam realized that the young seeker was a foreigner. The young people sat down next to each other. The blonde said that she had also been hired as a squire and introduced herself as Jessica Evans. The name sounded quite familiar. It was Evans who left the first comment under the video. During the conversation, the girl said that her parents were from Montenegro in America and she herself was born in Japan and raised there. Suddenly Evans asked why Liam didn't take the backpack. The main character was delighted at the chance to show off his inventory skill. He focused mana in his palm, and a blue portal appeared. The character, with a deft movement of his hand, took out a bottle of water from his inventory, previously prepared for the mission. Liam explained that he could hide things in a special space and take them out from there at any time. The Seeker was delighted with such a useful skill of the young man. She was so surprised that she involuntarily covered her open mouth with her hand. Thanks to views on YouTube, the main character increased the level and raised his inventory to the third level. Now a whole mountain of things can fit there. Evans lowered her beautiful green eyes down and looked at her hands. She was jealous of the guy, because she only has fighting skills. To which Liam replied that he should be jealous, because he doesn't have a single attacking skill. To cheer up the seeker, the character asked protect him in case of emergency. The young girl immediately began to smile. Her sad mood was replaced by enthusiasm. The blonde said that the main character could count on her. Suddenly, their dialogue was interrupted by dead silence. Followed by confident steps, the young people were distracted to see what was happening. The meeting began. The head of the guild of the Orf Lords came to the screen. All attention was focused on him. Jensen announced that three guilds would take part in the upcoming expedition. The remaining two guilds went on a video call. The head of the guild warned that the microphone would now turn on, so he asked those present to refrain from inappropriate conversations. A dark-haired girl attracted attention on the screen. Her gaze expressed complete confidence. Her lips were tightly pursed. This young warrior is the head of the Guild of Bloody Idols, part-time seeker of rank A, Bloody Karamia. The seekers are divided into several ranks. The head of the Orf Guild, Jensen has rank B. There is another person of rank B on the screen. As for rank A, there are not even 10 people in Japan. The main character and Evans were located at the very bottom of this hierarchy with many similar seekers of negligible level. A lump formed in her throat from excitement. Beads of sweat treacherously rolled down her cheeks. The blonde decided to clarify whether the young people would go into the dungeon with them. Low-ranking seekers are usually used as porters. They pay quite a lot for such outings. Apparently, young people will not encounter with serious dangers. Jensen decided to tell that the expedition will take place in the newly appeared Heavenly Palace, a rank A dungeon. On the weightless platform there was a half-collapsed gate, in the center of which was the entrance to the dungeon. Fear pierced Liam through and through, his heart beat faster from adrenaline, his face was twisted with fear, his teeth clenched, and there was so little air in the room. The head of the guild confidently talked about the dungeon, which was also nicknamed the Heavenly Fortress. This must be some kind of joke. A rank A dungeon and a level 10 seeker are incompatible. Liam's level and physical strength are too low to go to such a dangerous place. At that moment, the commander enthusiastically announced that he was counting on the guy. Now Liam could not leave when Jensen was so confidently encouraging everyone. Arriving at the place, the head of the Guild of the Orf Lords talked about how this expedition was a reconnaissance expedition. A complete passage was out of the question, and the reason for this was the lack of competent seekers. Not a single guild was capable of clearing a rank A dungeon alone. The majestic steps of Bloody Karamea were heard. Approaching the group, she said that she wanted to go through the plan again. One of the goals was to create a transit point inside the dungeon. If this is not possible, then at least get the maximum amount of information about the monsters. Of course, the main task is to complete the dungeon. So you need to join forces and act as a well-coordinated team. The expedition has about 80 participants most of whom are members of the Blood Idol Guild. Judging by their equipment, the idols are quite experienced seekers. Among them there are magicians, swordsmen, healers, and defenders. The squad works well in both ranged and melee combat. With the help of these gates, you can move between the Earth and another world. Apparently, only Karamiya's detachment will go into the dungeon, while the rest will supply supplies and send reinforcements. 
Frightened by what was happening, Evans said that she could not believe that she would take part in something as grandiose as exploring a rank A dungeon. Liam agreed with the girl's thoughts. Karamia's black hair fluttered in the wind. Everything about her pointed to an excellent leader. The head of the Bloody Idols began to announce the list of people included in the first attachment. While she was listing the list, the main character was thinking that he and the cute blonde should not be taken to the vanguard. Suddenly the names of young people were heard. My hair stood on end. I felt as if death itself was already breathing down my neck. Maybe Carmilla was mistaken. This option would explain everything. The head of the Bloody Idols was not mistaken. She carefully studied the data of each of those present. Karamiya decided to reassure the frightened newcomers that she would pay properly for this work. However, it was not a matter of money at all. The head of the Bloody Idols saw the level of the young Seekers. They were still completely green. This turned out to be unimportant. In such dungeons, all participants below the C rank are equal to each other. Of course, young people have the right to refuse. Karamiya would understand everything. Not everyone wants to risk their lives in a rank A dungeon. The thought of refusing was tempting, but Liam remembered his childhood. He always dreamed of becoming a Seeker. Perhaps this was his only chance to fight shoulder to shoulder with the strongest Seeker in Japan, which is why, gathering all his will into a fist, the guy confidently agreed. The young foreigner was clearly not ready for such a turn of events. Fear was visible in her large green eyes. The main character decided to calm the girl down with the words that she did not have to go inside, because he was just a fool who risked his life over trifles. Evan squeezed the straps of her backpack in her small hands, her whole body shrank in horror, but suddenly a quiet, uncertain voice announced that she would also go. Karamia did not expect any other answer. She had studied the characteristics of the young seekers well. The leader of the Bloody Idols continued her story. If you leave the dungeon unattended, monsters will begin to come out, which puts civilians at risk. Over the past 50 years, many people have lost their lives due to such incidents. The first squad went into the dungeon. The monsters living in the dungeons of rank A are very strong, but when the bloody idols took over, the monsters had no chance of survival. It is not for nothing that they are considered the strongest guild in Japan. At this time, the young seekers hid in a secluded place, behind the stone and occasionally peeked. Evans noticed that Liam was unusually calm and had the courage to observe the battlefield. At first, the main character was also very worried, but when he saw the guild in action, the worries receded. Moreover, the squad moved forward without any problems. It was already the sixth floor. The lower the Seekers descended into the dungeon, the stronger the enemies became. Perhaps they would finish much earlier than expected. While the guy was thinking about the expedition, strange sounds were heard behind him. A slimy, nasty monster of a jelly-like substance attacked Liam, who didn't even have time to react. The sound of a sword was heard. Evans dashingly cut the monster. Wanting to protect her friend, the green slurry scattered in all directions. The main character thanked the girl for saving her from the creepy eye. How good it was that the guy wasn't hurt. The porter exhaled with relief. Her legs trembled from the stress she had endured. She began to feel short of breath, and Evans unbuttoned the top button of her shirt. The girl was seriously scared. Why did she decide to become a seeker? Suddenly, from behind, a warning was heard from the squad that they had stumbled upon a nest of monsters. Not the most pleasant news in the dungeon. They were ordered to run away without looking back if the monsters got to them. A swarm of black huge spiders was on the way to the porters. Why disgusting spiders? It would be much easier if they were butterflies. The young people frantically looked for a place where they could hide from the running monsters. But there was simply no suitable place. A disgusting black spider was heading straight towards them, its red eyes already mentally weaving its victims into a web. Evans decided to take the blow on herself. She rushed towards the monster, drawing her sword. The guy remained on the sidelines, because he didn't even have a weapon to strike back. The brave girl hit the spider, but her strength was not enough to inflict damage on it. One swing of her leg, and the blonde's efforts were in vain. The sword flew out of her hand and fell to the ground. The girl lost her balance and fell down, remaining completely defenseless and open to being struck. The spider, carrying out his insidious plan to capture the victim, released his sticky web at the blonde. The girl's hands turned out to be attached to the floor by a web. She did not have enough strength to free herself. The victim was driven into a trap. Towering over his dinner, the spider was preparing to strike the final blow and wrap the young beauty in a cocoon. Is this really the end? Her whole life flashed before her eyes. How much Evans didn't have time to do, her eyes filled with tears. It can't end like this. 
Liam used his assessment skill on the spider and found out that the weak point is the stomach. It is vulnerable to fire, and the monster's ability is to immobilize prey using sticky threads. Having opened the portal to the inventory, the guy tried to find at least something useful. Suddenly, it dawned on him, because somewhere in the space, there was a lighter. The main character quickly found a gas canister, a budget flamethrower for exterminating insects. Having gotten closer, but still in the spider's blind spot, Liam, with a serious look, was ready to fry his opponent. However, the gas canister made a weak splash and became useless forever, because yesterday the guy was poisoning cockroaches with this canister. An awkward silence reigned for a second. The main character does not have a single attacking skill, the weakest class of all possible. His abilities will not help in any way when clearing the dungeon. The only option left was to protect his partner with his body. Liam decided to sacrifice himself for the sake of the girl he met a few hours ago. Blood splashes scattered around. However, the young people did not receive a blow. This time, death passed them by. Instead, the monster received damage. Help arrived just in time like never before. The porters saw the iconic silhouette of their savior. With an elegant movement of her hand, the girl inflicted further damage on the spider. Karamia elegantly delivered one blow after another, knocking the enemy away from her allies. Bloody bullets did not give the monster a chance to survive. The spider could not strike back at its prey, and today it will not have dinner. Stunned by what was happening, the young people watched the exciting battle between the head of the Blood Idol Guild and the E-Class monster. Finally, the defeated spider fell dead to the ground. The porters were saved, and pools of blood spread around. Having looked death in the eyes, the newcomers breathed a sigh of relief. This time they were lucky not to fall in battle in the dungeon. The A-rank seeker showed herself in all her glory. It's not for nothing that she is the head of the Blood Idol Guild and the captain of the first squad. Having finished with the monsters, the Seekers went further to explore the dungeon, and the Porters trailed behind everyone. A disappointed Evans whispered in a quiet voice that she was sorry, because because of her, her comrade almost got hurt. Liam, embarrassed by the words of his ally, exclaimed that this was not so. They were saved by Karamia. The drooping girl was upset that she did not keep her word to protect her partner. However, she pulled herself together and enthusiastically promised to cope next time. The guy was touched by her brave comrade in arms, even though she hurt his male pride. The girl asked the main character why he decided to become a seeker. He has no attacking skills. This question turned out to be too personal and difficult for the guy. In his memory, an intensive care unit emerges with the monotonous beeping of the machines that support the life of a person dear to him. Evans looked at the guy carefully. His gaze became glassy. Liam's thoughts took him far beyond the dungeon. The command to stop was sounded. The entire squad stood up in anticipation. Everyone understood perfectly well that they would soon have to face rank B. From the darkness of the dungeon came the sound of someone sound asleep. How long would this sleep last? The calm before the storm. In an instant, a huge fire wyvern flew up in front of the squad. Its roar spread throughout all the passages of the dungeon, echoing filling the corridors. Liam used his assessment skill. She has a large amount of mana and great physical strength. Not to mention two skills, the wyvern is strong even for a B rank. A monster of a certain rank requires at least three Seekers of the same level, or even more. Among the squad, there are three Rank B Seekers, a Swordsman, a Healer, and one Support. But their skills leave much to be desired. Fortunately, they have one A Rank Seeker, and if attacked by one Wyvern, there should be no problem. Problems arose. A second angry Wyvern rose above the squad from the other end of the corridor. Two Wyverns, besides, they squeezed the squad on both sides. Karamia alone cannot cope with two such strong monsters. No one said that high rank monsters would attack at the same time. But what else would you expect from an a rank dungeon? Panic gripped the squad. The searchers were clearly not prepared for such a turn of events. Despair swept through the corridor. The head of the Bloody Idols Guild resolutely rushed into battle, asking Liam to buy her time for the second monster. Buy time for Karamia, how to do it for a 10th level porter who does not have attacking skills. While Liam was coming up with a plan of action, he was pulled out of his thoughts by the blonde's scream. Barely having time to jump back, the guy fell to the floor. At that moment, the wyvern struck with its tail next to the porters, destroying everything around them. With such force, they could not cope. The fire dragon rose to its full height, demonstrating its greatness and superiority. Sharp claws ready to tear people's flesh into pieces. A seeker of a higher level rushed to protect the porters. He decided to engage in battle with such a powerful enemy. Strong fire mana concentrated around the blade. It enveloped the comrade's weapon and was ready to be used in battle. 
Finding himself above the wyvern, the seeker swung his blade and struck at his opponent. The fire magic did not work on the monster. Evans, despite her fear, once again heroically rushed to fulfill her promise to protect her friend. Trembling took over the body of the brave girl. It was unlikely that she could engage in battle with the wyvern and survive. The porter understood this. The appraiser pulled himself together and decided to use his skill in battle. The guy told his comrades that the monster has two skills, a fireball and a flap of wings. When using a fireball, she is able to fire up to five projectiles in a row. While flapping her wings, the wyvern lunges forward, strengthening your body with magic. Experienced seekers looked back at Liam with condemnation. Some cowardly guy, always hiding in the shadows, was telling them what to do. The evaluator continued to say that the monster is immune to magic and the fire element, so it is necessary to use physical attacks. This is a rank B monster. They do not have the ability to use an item, and almost no one knows the characteristics of the wyvern. But it is information that gives an advantage that can turn the tide of the battle. The only problem is that being on the verge of death, no one wants to trust the words of some porter. Suddenly, the owner of fire magic quickly got his bearings and suggested to his comrades that they must delay the wyvern with the help of ice magic and physical attacks until the captain dealt with the second monster. The man in armor reproached his comrade for trusting an inexperienced seeker. Then, the fire seeker argued that, being unarmed, this guy was trying to protect the girl from the spider. Such a fool would not have enough brains to invent such characteristics. Since the wyvern has resistance to magic, ice spells are unlikely to cause much damage. We need to somehow delay the monster until the captain returns. The experienced swordsman turned to Liam and asked if there was anything else about the monster. The evaluator concentrated on the wyvern and noticed that it was collecting mana in its mouth. Now it would breathe fire. The magicians trusted the main character and used an ice shield to protect themselves from the attack of the fire-breathing monster. The fireball headed towards the squad at high speed. Thanks to the evaluator's warning, the magicians were able to contain the attack and save their comrades. Having raised the 20th level, Liam gained the skill of observation. With its help, you can predict the enemy's next move. The wyvern's powerful paws took a stable position. Mana began to accumulate on the surface of the monster's skin. The evaluator informed his comrades that the monster was going to use a flapping of its wings. Now it would enchant its scales with magic and make a dash to the side. Most likely with this action, the wyvern would break the magic shield. The dungeon monster rushed at the seekers at incredible speed. The wyvern intended to defeat the squad. The command was sounded to raise the shields of the vanguard. They were obliged to stop it. Three brave men took a defensive pose. The wyvern slammed its body into the shields with all its speed, hoping to throw the seekers back with a shockwave. However, the monster underestimated its enemy. Drops of blood sprayed from the wyvern's neck. The squad managed to inflict physical damage. This time was enough for the leader of the Guild of Bloody Idols to defeat one enemy. The captain immediately stood in front of the wyvern and elegantly used blood absorption magic. The squad can exhale. A stream of blood gushed out from the monster's wound, after which all the blood left the monster's body and rushed towards Karamea. The creature, drained of blood by the magic of capital, let out its final roar, its lifeless body falling to the floor. Such a powerful monster now lies defeated. The squad made so much effort to inflict at least a little damage, and the captain killed the wyvern with only one technique. The fiery artifact fell out of the lifeless body, and the evaluator was overwhelmed with experience points. The system counted his contribution to killing the monster and generously rewarded him with points. Is the assessment skill really not useless? It was useful in such a serious battle and helped to defeat the monster. The vanguard squad recognized Liam's work. The fire swordsman patted the evaluator on the shoulder. The guy coped with his task, and suddenly a notification about a level increase arrived. Evans rushed to Liam. She said that it was incredible being an ordinary porter. He made a huge contribution to the battle. The main character was embarrassed, because he only told the guys about the monster's abilities. At this time, the enthusiastic girl, devouring a chocolate bar, tried to convince the appraiser that this was not so. He greatly helped out his squad. After killing the wyvern, the appraiser began to use his skill on other floors helping the group deal with monsters. The guy did not fight in the front ranks, so he did not gain much experience. However, the main character has increased his level to 22. The vanguard has already reached the 15th floor. The bloody idols are really strong. Having raised the level of his skills, the guy realized that there was no one stronger here then. From behind, Karamia's voice interrupted Liam's thoughts. The head of the guild said that she had made the right choice by taking the guy into the squad, because his skill was very useful. 
the main character looked at the captain in bewilderment, because he was completely sure that Karamia took him with her because of his inventory skill. But the guild leader said that she was additionally interested in the guy's third skill. She was counting on the young seeker. Since Karamia included Liam in the squad because she knew about the potential benefits of his skills, it means Evans also has some kind of ace up her sleeve. In battles, the evaluator is gaining more and more experience, which means that his comrades consider his information useful. The guys from the squad began to show more interest in the guy who did not have attack skills. Every five levels the skill level increases, while for every ten levels a new ability is given. While Liam was pondering his abilities, danger crept up unnoticed at a moment when it was least expected. Behind Evans there was a huge ogre. He was watching the young people and was preparing to attack the blonde. The huge green monster picked up an impressively sized stone. The ogre's pumped up body spoke of his incredible strength. But where did he come from? Most likely, he was sitting in ambush and waiting for the right moment to attack the detachment. The monster swung and as hard as possible threw a stone at its target. The stone flies straight at the unsuspecting Evans. She stands with her back to the enemy and does not see the threatening danger. The ogre spared no effort. Liam's stamina was not enough to cover his girlfriend with his body and survive this throw. The guy tried to use his collection skill to get the stone into his inventory. The idea seemed not bad. Perhaps it would work and protect the young girl from the stone. It almost worked. The stone flew into the inventory, but Liam was thrown several meters back. Evans looked back to see what happened. Her partner's blood splashed on her. The squad came across a crowd of ogres. They urgently need to regroup. The fiery swordsman looked back to check if Liam was alive after such a blow. The main character severely injured his arm, most likely broke it. He got off lightly, if not for his collection skills. Everything could have ended tragically. Enraged Evans will never forgive the ogre for such an act. As coldly and mercilessly as possible, the girl began to accumulate mana around the sword. Full of confidence, the girl rushed to attack. Incredible power of magic surrounded the foreigner, and with a slight movement of her hand, she dealt a posthumous blow to the monster. The ogre was cut into two parts, his blood splashed all around, and two parts of the once whole head fell to the ground. There was rage in Evans's green, once sweet eyes. Someone dared to harm her unarmed comrade. The monster got what he deserved. Karamia was distracted from the fight. The young blonde finally put aside her fear and showed her skill in battle. Liam used his assessment skill on his partner. The 17-year-old seeker has the class of a divine summoner. A divine beast moved into her body, or rather into a weapon. The girl still has poor control of the skill. She hid it because she was afraid of harming others. At that same second, Evans rushed to her friend and asked what was wrong with his hand, because the main character needed to be given first aid. Suddenly Liam noticed something flying at him. The guy caught a beautiful bottle with red liquid. The head of the Bloody Idols Guild asked to drink a potion. It should heal the appraiser's broken arm. Is Karamia sure? Since this is a very expensive and rare item, is it worth spending on a broken arm? The captain approached Liam and confidently said that if he died, she would lose all the things hidden in his inventory, and Karamia also needed the guy's strength. The embarrassed character did not argue with the head of the guild. He obediently drank the contents of the bottle. His hand healed. It seems that the squad's mission will drag on for another day, Karamia suggested setting up camp right here. The fiery swordsman approached Liam to ask how he was feeling. The captain of the squad reported that the vanguard had gone much further than Karamia had originally planned. This was entirely the merit of Liam. Only the guy began to make excuses that the bloody idols could have managed without him. The leader interrupted the evaluator and replied that they could not. Each of those present had already been to the heavenly fortress. Then the guild suffered huge losses and they had to retreat. The guild did nothing to become stronger. In other words, their victory is only the merit of the main character. Suddenly, the captain stunned Liam with her proposal. She wants the guy to join the guild of bloody idols. Evans was sincerely happy for her friend. Such an opportunity comes once in a lifetime. The main character was immersed in thoughts that he was weak. His characteristics and skills were simply terrible. And yet, he was recognized by one of the strongest seekers in Japan. Liam was happy with this thought. So happy that he had already forgotten that it is at such moments that tragedy happens. After this, the vanguard continued to explore the dungeon, reaching the 25th floor. The squad came across the gate of the hall with the boss. The huge gilded heavy doors amazed with their size. Everyone froze in fear of the future battle. Every seeker knows what is behind these gates. Behind them, the strongest monster of the dungeon is waiting in the wings. If you kill the boss, then there will be nothing left before completing the dungeon completely. 
The only thing you need to do is activate the self-destruct mechanism hidden in the boss room. However, it also happens that dungeons remain in the same place even after self-destruction. A-rank dungeons are a real mass grave. Not a single seeker has ever returned alive after meeting the boss. Judging by the data from past years, the squad's chances of victory are zero. Karamiya ordered to go to the camp. She plans to return as soon as she gathers more people. The party didn't expect anything else, they should all rest. Especially the newcomers, this is their first rank a dungeon. A voice was heard from behind the door, upset that the vanguard was about to leave so quickly. The squad did not expect such a turn of events. The voice came right from behind the gate, and all team members turned to the source, preparing to engage in battle. How is this possible? The bosses are just high-ranking monsters incapable of human speech. The commander became wary and ordered everyone to prepare for a possible battle. Something was not working out here. The members of the Blood Idol Guild took up positions. The knights stood in front of everyone and prepared their shields, equipped with protective spikes. The swordsmen took out their swords and knives. Cold sweat appeared on the faces of the squad members. They still cannot imagine what a nightmare they must endure in this difficult battle. Liam wondered why the monster spoke the language of people, and not some unknown language, but Japanese. Karamiya, without a drop of doubt, approached the gilded gates and decided to find out from the monster who he was. A voice from behind the gate asked what the head of the guild thought, if she was so interested. Then let her come in and check it out herself. It looks like the monster is taunting the party. Unfortunately, Liam can't use the assessment on an enemy he can't see. The head of the Bloody Idols Guild said that she had no desire to enter and engage in battle with the boss. She turned around and was about to leave the dungeon. The boss cannot get out of his hall on his own, so the squad is safe as long as the hall doors are closed. The voice replied that then he would come out on his own. This is impossible. At least that was what was previously thought. Everyone looked back at the gate in anticipation of what would happen next. The gate actually opened. Frightening, majestic mana rushed out of it, and a wind rose, enveloping everything around. The squad froze in anticipation of something terrible. The seconds lasted forever. A lump formed in the throat. The body was paralyzed with horror. A humanoid creature with dark skin and elf ears came out of the hall. He looks quite friendly. There was a pleasant smile on the creature's face. The elf-like one greeted the party. But there was something terribly frightening about this man. The captain asked the creature for an explanation of who the dungeon resident was and what he was doing here. The elf replied that he did not know who he was, and he was not mocking when he said this. He himself knew little about himself, but he understood one thing for sure. An ominous smile spread across the monster's face. His appearance gave me goosebumps from the horror that he instills. The creature only said that he exists to kill people. At that same second, two defenders were decapitated. Blood flowed like a fountain from the bodies of their comrades. The blood of their comrades covered the floor. The young seekers watched in panic. Now they can do nothing to help. The headless comrades fell onto the cold tiles. Now they will remain here forever. Everyone felt the presence of death in the corridor. The captain rushed with a protective shield to cover her team. She ordered not to forget about the previously agreed upon plan. Liam couldn't take his eyes off the open, dead eyes of his former comrade. Blood pouring down his face. How could this happen? For a couple of minutes everything was fine until now everything was going so smoothly that the main character completely forgot that in such a place death is a common occurrence. Dungeons are cemeteries for people. The dead silence was interrupted by the ringing sound of a falling sword. Evans had lost hope of returning home alive. The girl sank to the floor from a feeling of hopelessness. The whole team would die the death of the brave here. The head of the Guild of Bloody Idols realizes how difficult the upcoming battle will be. In order to defeat the enemy, you need to know his strengths and weaknesses, which the captain asked Liam to do. The enemy looked relaxed at the squad, succumbing to panic. He liked to see the horror in the eyes of people. Despite her fear, Evans asked the guy to hide behind her, because the girl promised to protect the main character. While Liam was trying to overcome his stupor and evaluate the elf, the enemy began to prepare for an attack. The humanoid asked the guys why don't they try to defeat him. The monster knew that people were powerless against him. The guy collected his thoughts and analyzed the elf. A dark elf of rank A, has skills, a chain of spells, silent witchcraft, multiple witchcraft, naturalness. The squad members were only thinking about this. How could they defeat such a powerful A-rank monster? Evans was still trying to protect the character. To kill a monster of rank A, you need three seekers of the same level. The only one who can compete with this elf is Karamiya. The squad's chances are almost zero. Seals appeared around the elf. This could only mean one thing. 
He is preparing a spell and will attack soon, which Liam warned the squad about. The vanguard froze in anticipation of what they could do against this monster. The squad was doomed to death. With one movement of his hand, the elf caused a hurricane and destroyed all the members of the squad. Many were seriously injured. People were covered in debris and heavy concrete slabs, and despair roamed the corridors. Everything happened so quickly. The dark elf was incredibly strong, and at one moment the enemy disappeared from sight. He teleported. The enemy turned out to be right next to Liam. He was interested in how the main character understood. Because the enemy was using an invisible magic circle, the elf approached the guy and looked into his eyes. The character shouted to Karamia that he needed to retreat immediately. The enemy was too strong. The distressed elf created a new seal and muttered that the guests were being too rude because they had just begun. Something happened behind us. Everyone turned to look. The enemy blocked the exit with a stone shield. The only chance to stay alive. The detachment immediately began to destroy the wall. The barrier was too strong. It was necessary to make all their efforts. However, no one took into account the fact that the swords turned out to be weaker than the stone shield. The weapon could not withstand the force of the impact and began to collapse. The elf decided to make the task easier for people and gave a hint that the barrier cannot be broken. The difference in magical power is too big, but there is someone capable of destroying the stone shield, one or two people. While Karamia can destroy the wall, Evans can't control her power, so it falls away. So we need to buy time for the A-rank seeker. This is the only option that can work, and the head of the Bloody Idols Guild knew it. The brave seekers promised to distract the elf, so Karamia can go and clear the exit from the stone wall. It is not for nothing that they are considered one of the best seekers in the country. The commander left the dark enemy to her subordinates, and she herself went to deal with the exit. The dark elf asked if the people had finished whispering. Mana began to concentrate in his hand. Liam managed to warn his comrades that the monster was going to use a medium-level water spell. The magicians used a wooden shield. Branches stretched up from under the ground, intertwining each other into a strong defense. A huge, massive tree grew in the middle of the corridor in order to hold back the Dark Elf's attack. The boss, deciding that Liam was interfering with his fun, decided to get rid of him first. The Elf opened a portal and called animals from an unknown world. Insects swarmed into the dungeon in order to attack the main character. Disgusting carnivorous dragonflies with a head split in half wanted to feast on a person. The insects fly too fast, there is no way for the main character to cope with them alone. And besides, there are too many dragonflies. Summoning the spirit, divine enchantment, Evans instantly dealt with a swarm of carnivorous insects. The dark elf got even more angry. The guy has a bodyguard. He needs to get rid of this thorn. The enemy is using a mid-level fire spell. The evaluator has warned his team of the danger. So close, but I didn't guess. A pillar of fire fell on the defenders. The magician skillfully repelled the enemy's attack. The fiery shot was followed by a hurricane. The Dark Elf is sure that people are not ready for such a turn. Liam was mistaken. The Water Shield would not be able to block such a powerful wind. The unmatched armor repelled the blow. The boss did not expect that people would be able to defend themselves from his cunning trap. They were able to inflict damage on the enemy. The main character should have more faith in his comrades. Unsurpassed armor is a skill that requires two knights to use. The skill strengthens the bodies of the Seekers and creates a shield that blocks any damage. The defenders coped with their task. The knights rejoiced. Good teamwork was done. Keep it up. But the joy did not last long. The fiery seeker responded to his name. These were his last seconds of life. The role of the knight was over. The headless comrade said goodbye to life. His head flew off his shoulders and fell on the cold tile. Without having time to realize anything, the second knight also lived the last seconds of his life allotted to him. The body of the brave seeker left an eternal emptiness within itself. The team looked through their previously living comrade. No one was ready for this. Death was too cruel for a seeker. Liam didn't even have time to feel anything. This was a technique that allowed him to cast a spell prematurely, without leaving any magical trace. Even though the evaluator now sees the enemy's mana, the guy is absolutely powerless in front of the elf. Liam is immersed in self-destructive thoughts. He is the weakest seeker. Until now, he has simply always been lucky, which makes the character arrogant. It is because of this that his comrades died. The evaluator's thoughts were knocked out by notifications about gaining experience points. Someone defeats monsters using Liam's video. A notification about leveling up. A new skill has been acquired. Suddenly, good news was heard from behind. The path was clear. Karamia rushed to the Dark Elf to delay the enemy and gain time for the squad. Left alone with the enemy, the head of the Guild of Bloody Idols decided to use her blood magic. 
The squad desperately ran towards salvation. They were too naive, but the elf said that they could not escape. A new stone shield rose in front of the imaginary freedom. The boss decided not to take his eyes off Karamiya. He would be unpleasant if the seeker made another hole in the stone shield. Rescue was literally within walking distance. Now the captain would not be able to help his team. Evans desperately fell to her knees. It was all over. Liam doesn't seem to care about pressing problems. He is clearly passionate about something. Learning a new skill that he acquired unexpectedly. Tears of despair well up in the girl's eyes. How can he be so calm in this situation? The main character asked Evans to stand up. He had clearly thought of something. His face looked calm and confident. The guy extended his hand to the young seeker. In this gesture, there is hope for salvation. You need to trust him. Liam wants the girl to summon the divine beast. Tears sparkled on the seeker's big green eyes. It's useless. She can't control the beast. If it gets out of control, everyone will die. Is there another option? Karamiya fights the main boss of the dungeon one-on-one. -on -one. There is no time to doubt his abilities. At the current level, Evans is unable to give orders to the divine beast. But Liam has gained a new skill. The main character looks confident in his abilities. In his plan, he firmly holds the young seeker's hand and conveys his calmness to her. Fascinated by the thought that this is not the end, the girl looks carefully at the appraiser with her large green eyes. Things are going worse for the squad than ever before. Constant enemy attacks are preventing them from getting back on their feet and taking any action. The commander ordered the vanguard to move further away, to the wall. She came up with some kind of plan. Liam is obliged to help her. Summoning the Divine Beast, the Divine Beast Arion. Everything around was covered with yellow divine mana. The guy watched with interest what was happening. Next to the miniature Evans was a divine white snake of incredible size. Compared to the Divine Beast, the Seeker is very small and fragile. But her determination extends to the entire area. Ready for battle. The girl extended her hand to her comrade. Together they would definitely cope with an opponent of rank A. The young people informed the captain that they were ready to take on the Dark Elf. The leader of the Guild of Bloody Idols had a more important mission. Surprised by the scope of the Divine Beast, the enemy thought about what to do with the people. Liam promised the girl that he would take control of Arayan. Evans must concentrate as much as possible. The guy used his new skill. Imitation, it allows you to temporarily copy the ability of the person on whom the guy used the assessment skill. Together, they will clearly be able to control Arayan. The young people ordered the snake to obey them. The beast, reluctantly, obeyed the order of the newcomers. As a sign of his submission, the divine being bent over the people and examined them carefully. Evans ordered Orion to kill the Dark Elf. At that same second, the serpent appeared near its target and opened its mouth to attack the enemy. The elf was not taken aback, collected mana, and used stone bullets to defeat the divine beast. For Orion, these bullets did not pose any danger. The snake reflected the spell in an instant. The snake hit the Dark Elf with all its might, but he managed to jump back and dodge the attack. Mana is much weaker than Aran's divine energy. The monster doesn't stand a chance. The squad with Karamiya almost broke the stone shield. The enemy concentrated mana in his hand. Preparing for another attack, he would not allow people to escape from him. The young seekers ordered the divine serpent to prevent the enemy from using the spell. The snake immediately rushed to carry out the order of his masters. The elf had to defend himself from the snake. The attack was prevented. The vanguard was finally able to break through the wall and open the way to freedom. Is everyone really saved? And soon this nightmare will be left behind. Karamiya told the guys that the passage was open. It was time to leave this damn place and return home. Not believing their ears, the young people were happy. They were free. Evans ordered the snake to get rid of the dark elf. The happy members of the vanguard left the dungeon boss and disappeared among the corridors. The monster was upset that the people managed to escape. This had never happened to him before. The puzzled elf looked after them for a long time. Looking up from his thoughts, the monster realized that he still needed to deal with the divine white serpent. The solution to the problem came naturally. The dark elf got rid of Arayan with one blow. All that was left of the divine serpent was the tail. The A-rank elf was incredibly strong. The lady with red hair reproached the elf for his unreasonable behavior. As soon as she closed her eyes for a minute, he got involved in a battle in which he almost lost. The joyful monster deduced that the Divine Serpent was vulnerable to physical attacks. The tired elves, talking about something of their own, went through the gates and disappeared into the darkness. Exhausted by recent events, Liam lay on the bed and thought that initially he should have received 150,000 yen. But then the rate was raised to 500,000. It turns out that in two days he earned a million yen. Is this a worthy price? 
Four people died during the expedition to the Sky Fortress, and several veteran seekers died. The team couldn't pick up their bodies. A funeral with empty coffins feels really bad. The Vanguard members were completely defeated. Their comrades cannot even be buried according to tradition. Liam decided for himself that he would definitely return to the Heavenly Fortress and finish off the elf with his own hands. The video with the Dark Elf spread all over the internet and quickly gained a million views. In the Sky Fortress, the squad encountered 57 types of monsters. Thanks to that video with the elf, the main character finally received monetization. He spent part of the money spent on editing 20 videos from professionals, thanks to which the number of subscribers increased. Having reached level 77, the guy began to spend several days raising the next level. The assessment skill began to show more information. The inventory became huge, like a gym. Clairvoyance allows you to assess the boss before entering the dungeon. This is a rank B dungeon in Shinjuku that was completed by others. A non-symmetrical tall building stood surrounded by a fence. There are a hundred floors in total. But the higher you go, the stronger the enemies become. There was a boss on the final floor. Liam confidently opened the gates of the dungeon he had completed and went inside without a drop of doubt. He came here for one reason, namely to use his new ability and summon a spirit. The guy confidently used his skill and ordered the spirit Zophilus to appear before the main character. The wind rose around and filled the entire space. A huge mana emanated from the epicenter. As a result, a giant-sized silhouette with long fur, huge yellow eyes and long pointed ears rose out of nowhere. The creature looked closely into the guy's blue eyes burning with flames due to the use of his skill. Spirit, overjoyed to be called upon, thanked Liam for his cooperation, an ear-to-ear -ear smile on his face. Zophilus is not a divine beast. Nevertheless, he is very strong, and the spirit was adorned with golden, sparkling jewelry. The joyful Zophilus exclaimed that the owner looked cool today. As always, the impatient animal asked how long they would work today. Hearing the answer that they would work for eight hours, the spirit attacked the owner with open arms, saying that Liam was charged 80,000 yen for cooperation. This is the only problem. Zophilus takes money, not mana, for his work. The spirit is simply obsessed with money. Zophilus follows all orders, as long as the owner pays him. Liam told the spirit about the plan for today. The owner will fight new monsters, and he must deal with everyone else. During this time, the opponents approached a detachment of upright lizards in armor. They were armed. Determined to get a well-paid job, Zophilas said that he would deal with his enemies in no time. Taking on an ominous appearance, the spirit released a huge amount of mana, and the wind emanating from Zophilas caused the owner's hair to rise up. Without saying a word, the spirit used the spell, which took the opponents by surprise. They only know how to fight in close combat. A squad of enemies fell at that very second. Sharp forms of mana pierced the lizards right through, and a valuable artifact fell from the bodies of the enemies. Zophilus is the same rank as that elf. Thanks to the YouTube channel, Liam can earn money, become stronger, and complete dungeons. Liam's heart skipped a beat. A picture from the intensive care unit popped up in his head. With part of the money earned from YouTube, the guy pays for the hospital expenses. Suddenly the phone rang. It was Evans. The guy answered the call immediately. She realized that the YouTube channel really belonged to the main character. The girl admitted that she watched the video even before Liam became popular. It was thanks to him that the Seeker was able to defeat her first slime. The guy was embarrassed by how cute Evans was. Zophilus immediately began to joke about the embarrassed owner and advised him to spend the money not on the girl, but on the spirit. But Evans is not his girlfriend, and he spends all his money on Zophilus. The spirit joked that he is a hopeless businessman. Nothing can be done about it. The guy said that he was forced to spend money on the spirit because he himself was terribly weak. He needed the strength of Zophilus. The spirit became embarrassed and said, no matter what the owner dreamed of, Zophilus would not give up the price because of some sentimentality. The phone rang again. This time it was the editor who was disturbing him. He offered to conclude an exclusive contract. We need to meet and discuss it on the spot. Having finished the conversation, the guy walked towards the exit, thinking about the exclusive offer. Clearing six floors is very tiring. The guy had to walk here for three days in a row. He stretched to relieve at least a little fatigue. These trips bring a lot of money to the spirit. What a pity that the working day is already over. Zophila said goodbye and disappeared. Liam noticed that the spirit had bought himself a smartwatch, and the divine beast's farewell was heard from the remaining mana. Today the main character was called to the Guild of Bloody Idols. The guy came to his destination. Evans was also invited to the meeting. Karamia said that she wanted young people to join her guild. With Liam's assessment skill, the guys can fight at full strength. Everyone hopes that he will join the guild. The guy just needs to accept the invitation. 
Karamiya is in no hurry to answer, he can think for a while. The head of the guild said goodbye and walked out the door. Evans is excited by the invitation because she doesn't yet know how to control the Divine Beast. Liam helped her with this that time. The young people discussed that this was an invitation from one of the best guilds in the whole world. They had no reason to refuse. Something about this bothered Liam. Evans is right. The young people finished the discussion, said goodbye, and everyone went about their business. Every seeker dreams of joining the Bloody Idol Guild. But maybe there are other options. The guy opened the door to the coffee shop where he had an appointment with the editor. I wonder what this exclusive offer is. Suddenly Liam was called from behind. The editor came and apologized for the wait. The guy replied that apologies were pointless because he himself arrived earlier than the appointed time. The editor introduced himself. His name is Xavier Simon. The man thanked Liam for always turning to Xavier for editing. While the man was ordering coffee, the main character was deep in thought that Xavier was so polite and looked to be about 25. Liam asked the editor to get straight to the point, namely the exclusive contract that the man wants to offer. Having waited for the order, Xavier tried the first sip of the perfectly prepared coffee. It spread warmly throughout his body and thinned out the exquisite aroma. After the man carefully replaced the cup, he jumped up over Liam and screamed that the young blogger was incredible. Simon continued to shout that every day the guy's video is watched by a huge number of people. He is the most popular searcher on YouTube. The man is amazed at how quickly the main character generates decent content. Everyone in the coffee shop paid attention to the unrestrained man. He was clearly worried. Xavier immediately began to apologize for his reaction. All this made Liam embarrassed. The man admitted that he does not have enough video editors. So the best solution would be to found his own guild and assemble a team of editors. In addition, they will need a corporate lawyer to help with the law. Until recently Liam was poor, so he did not even consider such options. The guy admitted that he had recently been invited to the Bloody Idols, and he wanted to agree to this invitation. This is a very serious decision. Liam is glad that the head of the Blood Idol Guild of Rank A, one of the most powerful seekers, recognized him, but he still needs to think about the decision. The man jumped out of his chair and loudly declared that the main character simply had to create his own guild. This way, according to Xavier, Liam will be able to reveal his potential to the maximum. The main character is seduced by the fact that the editor recognized the guy's high potential. Simon began his story that he was once a member of the Seekers Guild, but his class was so weak that he decided to leave. The man admitted that he could not reason sensibly even in the weakest dungeons. Often people with similar classes cannot even raise the level. Simon has switched to a higher tone. Liam's videos help newbies with non-combat classes level up. He has hope for inexperienced seekers. Xavier's last words echoed in the main character's head. His talent is unique and thanks to him, the guy is no longer a loser, but a hope for others. Xavier began to shout, when suddenly the waitress called him from behind and asked him to be quieter, because he was disturbing other visitors. Having lost control of himself, the editor began to apologize to the girl, which made her blush. Xavier sat down and said that it was for this reason that he wanted to conclude an exclusive contract. The editor abandoned his dream, but he did not want others to suffer the same fate. Liam weighed the pros and cons. Without hesitation, he decided to accept the man's offer and informed him about it. Jumping up, Simon couldn't believe his ears, because the main character had already been invited to the Bloody Idols. Karamia and Evans recognized him, but only as a person who is useful in the presence of seekers with combat classes. Xavier said that Liam's skills are unique and useful in themselves. First of all, you need a lawyer to create a guild, according to Simon. On average, it costs about 50 yen a month to pay for it. You also need to find a specialist who is familiar with the activities of video bloggers. The next day, the character went to one of the best law firms to conclude a contract. The young man was met by two people, a representative of a legal agency and a young lawyer. Liam talked about his channel where he posts monster rating videos. Last month, advertising expenses exceeded 10 million yen, so he was offered to start his own company. The guy also told them about his income and other things related to money. The representative offered the main character Charlotte's services. She would tell him about the terms of the contract. The representative leaned closer to his colleague and whispered that he was counting on her. He squeezed her shoulder tightly and left. Charlotte offered to bring Liam up to date. As his personal lawyer, she spoke in detail about the terms of the contract. The main character is not well versed in the field of law so he does not know whether he is being scammed or not. But Charlotte not only listened carefully to the guy, but also clearly explained all the incomprehensible points. Liam realized that he agreed to sign the contract. The guy bowed to the girl and said that he was counting on her. He hoped for fruitful cooperation.
Opening your own company involves issuing shares. Initially they belong to the head, in other words, all shares will belong to Liam. Then the appraiser said that he would like to give part of the shares to the person who edits his videos, because it was his idea to found the company. Charlotte said that the head of the company would need to transfer 30% of the shares to the lawyers, because Liam would own half the shares of the company, so nothing bad would happen. Later in the evening, the director called his subordinate to his office and asked her to tell him how the negotiations went. Charlotte said that the client is poorly versed in law and is an overly honest person. By introducing him to the right people, the lawyers will be able to buy out half of the shares of his company. The representative rubbed his palms, glad that everything was going like clockwork. The shares were almost in his pocket. Until now, Charlotte has gotten under his feet, but if she copes with this matter, the director will forgive all the mistakes of her subordinate. How scary this man is, he always has his own motives. The girl broke out in cold sweat, it treacherously ran down her face. After a difficult day, Charlotte went to the only safe place where she could put her thoughts in order. The girl went into the toilet and locked herself in the stall. What should she do in this situation? She sat on the back of the toilet and pulled her legs towards her, clasping them with her arms. Charlotte has always done nothing but listen to the orders of her superiors, but so far she has not concluded even one successful contract. If she fails now, she will be fired. Letting her emotions out, the girl left her safe place and went to the mirror. Her face looked exhausted. A law firm representative stood at the window, looking into the distance, talking to someone important on the phone. Recently, there are more and more searchers in Japan, but lawyers have not been able to conclude a single deal with large Japanese guilds. The plan is to establish many controlled guilds and become a driving force in the seeker market. At the end of that line, they planned something large scale. Then the director decided to please his interlocutor, because today they were approached by a very ambitious guy who wants to found his own guild. The representative will make Liam his puppet. The next day, the main character came to the law office again to discuss some nuances. The lawyers want him to sell 30% of the remaining shares, but then he will have less than half. Charlotte tried to convince the client that the responsibilities of running the guild would be better divided between several people. She even offered to introduce Liam to someone with extensive management experience. The guy refused. He wants to give this 30% to Charlotte. Liam is used to trusting his intuition. The lawyer was put into a stupor because the client practically does not know Charlotte, why he decided to give it to her. The girl carefully watched the guy. He wants to found his own company in order to become the next victim of deception. Once again, sitting in the booth, Charlotte thought about Liam's motives. She came to the conclusion that the guy did not have everything at home. Giving 30% of the shares to a stranger is simply insane. The safest thing to do is to keep all the rights to the company for yourself. And why does he trust so much the person he just met? All Liam has to do is sign and the contract is signed. Charlotte and his editor have 60% of the shares. In other words, if they unite, they can run the company. The day of signing the contract approached. At the entrance to the company, Liam suddenly met Xavier. The guy asked what he was doing here. Charlotte called and said that Simon needed to sign the contract, and the colleagues went to the office together. All participants gathered on the spot. Two copies of the agreement were on the table. Charlotte suggested getting straight to the point. The manager, saying that after signing the contract, Liam will then become the head of his own company. From that day on, Charlotte will be his corporate lawyer. The man's gaze fell on the table. He asked his subordinate where the contract itself was. There were completely different papers on the table. Charlotte said that she refused to draw up an agreement with Liam. Everyone looked at the girl in surprise. The boss turned to his subordinate. How dare she say such a thing? This deal is important to him. The girl with a calm expression on her face reached into her purse for an important document. Yesterday she decided everything for herself. Charlotte's fragile palm placed her resignation letter onto the table. It's all over for the girl in this company. The enraged director jumped up from the sofa and began yelling at his subordinate. She has no right to do this. In turn, Charlotte stood up and bowed to Liam and asked for forgiveness to her client. The girl admitted that she had been deceiving the guy all this time. The manager ordered her to take control of the protagonist's company. Liam was surprised by this turn of events, but he himself understood that something was going wrong, which he informed the girl about. Charlotte looked up at her client. He was smarter than she thought, which means he knew the lawyer was lying to him. Then Liam talked about his appraisal skill, which allows you to find out the value of things. At the 10th level, the skill evolved, and now the main character can determine people's worldview, see right through them, a rather useful skill. 
In other words, he is now able to tell if a person has ulterior motives, those who want to harm Liam are surrounded by a dark aura, while honest people have a light aura. From the very first meeting, the guy knew that the boss was a scoundrel, so his aura couldn't be darker, while Charlotte's aura is clean and bright. That's why Liam realized that the manager was up to something wrong, and therefore the guy decided to trust the girl. The boss jumped up, pointed his finger at the girl and began blaming the employee for all his failures. He asked if she knew how many times the manager turned a blind eye to the mistakes of a subordinate. If she wanted to quit her job, the man would make her pay for all the damage caused. Then the main character stood up and nobly offered to pay the entire amount for the humiliated employee. Now Charlotte is his corporate lawyer. This can be considered an advance payment for services. Liam values reliable people. The girl couldn't believe her eyes. She had worked for the tyrant for so many years, endured all his nagging. But now working with a person who is not part of the company will be even better. Charlotte said she couldn't be the company's lawyer because she was trying to deceive Liam on the manager's orders. The guy reassured the lawyer because in the end she didn't do this. Xavier said that this was all Liam. He refused to invite the bloody idols because he believed in Simon's dream. The main character extended his hand to the employee and asked if Charlotte would like to become their corporate lawyer. The girl has not been so happy for a long time. Finally, she will work in a good, friendly team where her work is valued. How dare they take the employee right from under her nose? The man demanded to stop chattering. They had already forgotten who he was. The manager would do everything so that not a single office would look at Charlotte again. The girl took out a voice recorder from her pocket, where the manager's entire conversation was recorded. The entire insidious plan to take over Liam's company was recorded there. The girl emphasized in a cold voice that the man was trying to harm clients for personal reasons. This is the worst crime. The manager was taken by surprise. If this material gets to the masses, the man's career is over. In addition, taking advantage of his official position, the manager invited the employee to the hotel several times. And this is sexual harassment. The man was sure that his actions would go unpunished. And now his subordinate quit. The young people said goodbye to the unscrupulous manager and left, leaving behind deafening silence. It's not every day that you come across such a situation. In any case, founding your own guild is not a river to cross. As a thank you and apology, Charlotte is ready to give her all to help the new guild. The girl was filled with energy and enthusiasm from her new job. Finally, everything in her life was going as it should. The first thing you need to do is rent an office for the guild. Charlotte will make a selection of the best offers, but for now you need to choose a name. As soon as people were inspired by the choice of name, Liam upset his colleagues. He had already come up with a name. Finally, on the office wall hung the treasured metal plate with the name of the guild. The Art of Analysis. Liam looks at the sparkling sign with delight. He really founded a guild, his own. Xavier entered the office and took the guy by surprise. The head of the guild again stared at the nameplate. The team rented one floor in a high-rise building and converted it into an office with a guild. So far, the staff consists of only five editors, but the team is actively searching for seekers. Xavier has become the head of the editor's team. Charlotte has taken on all the paperwork. Liam, being the head of the guild, records new videos with the passage of dungeons. The head of the new guild came to the next dungeon. The character used his power to summon the divine spirit. The guy ordered Zophilas to appear. The summoned spirit was incredibly happy with its owner. Zophilas asked how much they would work today, but Liam didn't come for that. The spirit had previously said that he had an enhanced form. The guy asked how much he needed to pay for it. If at full strength, then a million yen. Expensive. But to defeat the elf, the main character needs to use all possible options. He will not be able to win if he does not fight at full strength, so the guy needs to know what Zophilas is capable of. The spirit could not believe what he heard. This is the first time he meets such a person. Liam said that he trusts Zophilas. Previously, everyone was whining that his enhanced form was expensive. How lucky it was that the owner had extra money, but the spirit is glad that the guy trusts him. Zophilas is ready to show the true strength of the A-rank spirit. Powerful mana filled the corridors of the dungeon. The flow of mana was so strong that the main character had to cover his eyes with his hand. Through the flow of mana, one could see some fragments of a new spirit form. Blue hair covering long pointed ears, thin long fingers, a thin tall body. Liam clearly didn't expect to see Zophilus in this form. His usual form was not even close to this. A white skinned creature with ashen hair, vampire fangs and gold colored eyes looked at its owner. Even Zophilus's mannerisms had changed, from a jocular businessman to an elegant one. Liam wondered who the spirit was now. Zophilus replied that once upon a time he was cursed by God, turning him into an ugly animal. In fact, 
He is not a vampire. He is an angel. A fallen angel. The creature approached the guy. He was interested in why the owner turned so pale. The angel came too close. Zophilus decided to get down to business, as gratitude for the opportunity to take on his old form, he will show what the enhanced form is capable of. Power over darkness, the hidden power that rules the world. The angel concentrated his mana into a seal. Liam is frightened by the power of Zophilus. He uses the power that allows him to change reality with his own hands. In one move, the angel found the dungeon monsters and cast the spatial blade spell. At that same second, the angel teleported leaving Liam alone in the dungeon corridor, Zophilus's feathers smoothly landing on the stone floor. The guy immediately received notifications about his level increase, but he was at level 85. Moving to the next one requires a lot of experience, and now he has risen to three levels at once. The angel came back, he landed neatly on the floor, flapping his large black wings. Zophilus began to boast that he destroyed all the monsters, starting from this and ending with the fifth floor. The search allows you to find all the monsters, Teleportation helps you move to them, and the Spatial Blade does a lot of damage. Everything would be fine. But killing monsters that other Seekers fought is against the rules. And besides, now Liam will not be able to collect artifacts from killed monsters. And most importantly, he will no longer be able to shoot videos that bring him money. The Angel realized that he was mistaken. Zophilas became upset. His wings sank to the ground like a tail between his legs, and even his character changed. The main character decided to cheer up the angel and asked him to be more careful next time. Liam also noted that his assistant was very cool. Zophilus is a fairly strong ally and very flexible. With him the battle with the Dark Elf will be much easier. The next day, Evans burst into the guild and asked her comrade why he did not tell the girl that he had founded his own guild. The guy wanted to announce this news to everyone he knew officially, like now, but it was too late. Then, an alarmed Simon burst into the office. He said that the head of the Guild of Bloody Idols had come to see Liam. Karamia this time was wearing a black business suit, which suits her very well, with a white blouse, and the scent of roses was wafting from her. The allies had not seen each other for a long time. Liam was very happy to see his former commander, while Evans looked at the main character with jealousy. Karamia, walking along the corridor, noted that he had a good guild. These words pleased the guy. His efforts were not in vain. The entire staff is fully invested in telling the world about the talent of their director. The editors create high-quality content from the videos they shoot. Most often, strong seekers from large guilds begin to act alone, and the same misfortune befell Karamia. The bloody leader approached Liam and continued that if he continued to go towards his goal, then there would be many more seekers in his guild than in hers. Evans was thinking about how to say why she came here. She was rehearsing the speech in her head and was very worried, gathering her thoughts. The girl declared that she wanted to join the Art of Analysis Guild, her green eyes sparkling with excitement. The Seeker stated that she had increased her level and learned to control the Divine Beast. Liam was surprised by the words of his comrade-in-arms. Since Karamia invited her to her guild, the girl was going to agree to the proposal. Karamia clarified the situation, because Evans refused to join the Bloody Idols. Then the head of the Guild of the Art of Analysis decided to clarify whether the girl was really satisfied with joining his guild. After all, she has one of the strongest combat classes. Liam is sure that now she will be accepted into any guild. The girl became sad. She plunged into her memories. She was haunted by nightmares of the past. When she first summoned the Divine Beast, the girl's power went out of control, causing her mother to suffer greatly. Liam looked at his friend with regret. She had lived through such a nightmare. It was clearly not easy for her. The Seeker continued her story that her mother never blamed her for what happened. The girl does not want anyone to suffer because of her power again. That is why Evans decided to become a seeker. At first, she was scared. But after stumbling upon Liam's video, the girl gradually began to increase her level. During the expedition, she was able to take control of the Divine Beast. It was all thanks to him. Now it's the seeker's turn to help her friend. He can count on her. Suddenly, the girl became embarrassed. She clearly started talking and asked for forgiveness for such a long story. Summoning a Divine Beast is a very useful skill, and only a few can use it. Liam doesn't need to test the girl with the skill. He can already see that she is a good person. The head of the Guild of the Art of Analysis stood up, extended his hand to his colleague, and, in this case, asked for love and favor. So there was one more person in the Guild. The Art of Analysis is gradually growing. Sitting in his office, Liam wondered out loud whether the room was too big for him alone. He constantly runs around dungeons and shoots videos, and is almost never here. 
Then Charlotte interrupted him and noticed that the office should correspond to its status. Additionally, a colleague said that today, two candidates for joining the guild should come to them. This amazed the guy. First Evans, now two more. Two embarrassed seekers walked through the door, a tall guy with a sword and a short girl with a staff. Isaac Kreck, fire swordsman class and Hazel Young, healer class. These guys have pretty good classes. They will be useful to the guild. They are 18 years old. Charlotte specifically selected people younger than the director of the Guild of Art of Analysis. Inspired, Isaac said that he was very glad to meet him. He watched Liam's video and therefore decided to join this guild. Hazel admitted that if it weren't for the video, she would never have decided to become a seeker. She thought that healers were not as needed as strong fighters. Simon looked into the office. He was interested in looking at the young candidates. He was glad that the seekers came to them. Liam thanked the candidates for their confessions. He was happy that they really found his videos useful. The guy said that their own efforts played the main role. They were able to come so far and become seekers only thanks to their own strength. The director also admitted that he is terribly weak as a seeker, so he is counting on their help. The speech of the head of the guild inspired the young seekers. They decided that Liam was a very modest and reasonable leader. Charlotte realized that the main character accepted candidates for the Guild of the Art of Analysis, which she was very happy about. Since there are already three seekers in the guild, it's worth trying to test the theory of the head of the guild. The guy asked if the guys were free today and got to the point. The seekers have come to a weak dungeon to raise the levels of newcomers. It's time to learn how the principle of leveling up works. Zophilus was delighted to see his master. With open arms, he walked towards Liam, when suddenly, Krek attacked the angel, mistaking him for an enemy. He advised not to approach the head and called Zophilus a dirty monster. Liam managed to stop the inexperienced seeker and said that this spirit was his friend, and he should not be offended. To increase the level of these two, the guy decided to take them to this particular dungeon. And since such an opportunity arose, he decided to invite Evans. In enhanced mode, Zophilus is too strong and requires a lot of money. So Liam wants to increase the number of allies and, if possible, increase their levels. He wants to pump these two up a lot so that he can clear dungeons as a group. For this, he needs to test one theory. The group came across slimes, which is just right for testing a hypothesis and leveling up newcomers. The head of the guild asked Isaac for his sword. He borrowed it without any problems not understanding what was going on. The main character cut the monster with one blow. It spread like liquid throughout the dungeon and revealed an inconspicuous artifact. Liam asked the newcomer whether he received experience for the fact that Isaac lent the head his sword. The answer was negative. Conclusion 1. Experience points are not awarded to the owner of the weapon if he did not defeat the monster. Then the guy took and cut his hand with a sword in several places, which greatly surprised his group. After which the head asked Hazel to heal his wounds in order to test the second theory, the girl agreed. Using her healing skill, the young seeker took the staff and healed the headmaster's severed hand. The main character again attacked the green jelly-like monsters, cutting them with Isaac's sword. After the work was done, Liam asked Hazel if the healer received experience for participating in the slaying of the monster. Conclusion 2 Healers receive experience points if the person they healed kills a monster. Otherwise, this is a long-known fact. Then the main character asked Isaac to use the fire enchantment skill on the sword, which lasts 10 seconds. Fire Blade is a skill that allows you to apply flame to any weapon. It increases the power of the strikes and leaves burns. Swinging his fiery weapon, Liam dealt a fatal blow to the weak monster, killing it with one blow. Isaac was surprised because this time he was credited with experience. Conclusion 3. Experience is shared when the seeker helps kill the monster using his skill. Evans didn't understand at all what was happening, so she asked her colleague about it. Liam explained everything to her. He finally understood why he gets experience per video and how the level rises. The guy, to one degree or another, helped kill monsters with the help of his skills. Now the principle of distribution of experience has become clear. The head will use this knowledge to speed up the process of leveling up. Isaac was delighted with his leader, because the seeker had never even thought about how experience was distributed. The boy did nothing but received level 12. Liam's plan was effective. The young lady was also surprised. She only healed her commander's wounds, but raised the 10th level. A caring colleague decided to help Liam relax and began giving him a massage, believing that the leader was very tired. Of course, you need to raise the level by fighting yourself. But the guy himself raised the level with the help of the video. He wanted Isaac to raise his level by enchanting the blades of Zophilus and Evans. Yang, on the other hand, can gain experience and level up by healing the wounds of seekers who fight monsters. 
Thus, raising the level in the team turned out to be very interesting and not difficult. At first it was not easy for Liam, because dungeons are cemeteries for people. Of course it would be bad if newbies leveled up without learning anything, but a high level would help them avoid mortal wounds. The head of the Guild of the Art of Analysis is obliged to minimize any risks that could lead to the loss of a fighter. The inspired newcomers promise the head to give their all in order to quickly become useful to the guild. It is possible that a sharp increase in level could affect the physical health of the Seekers. In Liam's case, the characteristics increased very slowly, so he did not have to think about it. So five levels in a day will be enough. Tomorrow they will return to the dungeon again to raise five levels. One day they will become the strongest group of Seekers. Falling on the bed after a hard day, the guy thought that since he started uploading videos to the internet, a lot has changed. He reached level 100 and founded his own guild. It's good that the main character's videos are just as useful and the views don't drop. Perhaps the time has come to think about a rematch with the Dark Elf from the Sky Fortress. Since that moment, Liam has become stronger. A notification came to the phone, which pulled the guy out of his thoughts. He took his phone. Someone wrote to the guild's mail. The Cup of a Thousand Blades proposed a plan to clear the Heavenly Fortress. This message excited the guy. By going there, the character will be able to obtain a large amount of material, increase his level and gain new skills. A rank at dungeon is one of the most difficult dungeons in the country. Strong monsters live there, for which they give a lot of experience. Having turned on the news in the morning, Liam came across a story about the Heavenly Fortress. The Seekers had already entered inside. This operation was carried out on the initiative of the Guild of the Cup of a Thousand Blades. Since the beginning of the expedition, Liam has gained a whole bunch of experience from monsters. Videos of which he posted on YouTube. The guy has crossed the line of 100 levels, one might say. He has risen to rank A, but his characteristics still leave much to be desired. However, the guy has more skills. They are mainly aimed at supporting others, in which case Liam needs the help of other seekers. Isaac has fire magic and is useful in close combat, while Hazel will heal the team. And of course, Evans with her rare class. With the help of her divine beast, she fights well at long range. The key to leveling them up is clearing dungeons. The phone rang. Liam had to distract himself from his thoughts and pick up the phone. Charlotte was calling. She asked the director to come to the guild. At the office, an employee informed the head that a guild from the United States wanted to order an assessment of an item that was not covered by the assessment sheet. In case of failure, they are ready to pay 500,000 yen, but for success they will be given 100 million yen. An impressive amount. The Purple Mist Guild is one of the five strongest guilds in America. It turns out that the Art of Analysis is a fairly well-known guild abroad. Of course, the Purple Mist is much more famous than their guild, so it's worth accepting this offer so that more people know about the guy's abilities. Liam decided that Charlotte was absolutely right. He agreed with the Purple Mist's proposal. Charlotte immediately conveyed the director's answer. She was told that they were ready to come right now. This information unsettled Liam. Japan and the USA are connected by magical gates, which allows you to travel instantly, a luxury ordinary people hardly have enough. Representatives of the Purple Fog are already here. Liam remembered that he does not know English, Charlotte promised him to act as a translator. From the threshold, the head of the guild was blinded by powerful mana, because of which he had to freeze to get used to the lighting. Liam covered his face with his hands and asked who the owner of such mana was. This man was clearly very strong. The man was surprised that the guy saw his mana. The owner of such power stretched out on the sofa, crossing his legs. The blonde confidently approached the guy and asked if he was an appraiser. The American thought that the rumors were lies. Approaching even closer, the man introduced himself as Sebastian Richards. The blonde clearly did not know the concept of personal space. Sebastian was glad to meet you, and Liam took this opportunity to evaluate the characteristics of the tactless blonde. Richardus has the Dragonoid class, level 125, and is an A-rank seeker, just like Karamia, but the amount and density of his mana is simply incredible. The blonde was surprised that Liam could see even this. He asked to take a good look. And say that the guy could see more. The main character was saved by an older man who called out to Sebastian and asked him not to be rude to his business partner. Goosebumps ran down Liam's spine. Charlotte asked if he was okay. The guy replied that he seemed to have been shaken thoroughly. The head of the Purple Mist introduced himself. His name is Jonathan Wood. He introduced the other participants in the meeting. Jonathan extended his palm to Liam and they shook hands. It turns out that Wood is not a seeker. Sebastian represents the interests of the guild. In this aspect, business partners resemble a guild of the art of analysis. 
the Americans first asked for a non-disclosure agreement. Basically, the contract states that you cannot tell anyone about the item that will be assessed and that you are prohibited from sharing information obtained during the assessment. After signing the agreement, the parties were ready to begin the appraisal. First Jonathan asked to look at a photograph of the artifact. The hieroglyphs on this parchment do not belong to any language on Earth. The Purple Mist has a team working on the translation, but there are no results. Afterwards, the head said that the artifact was found in a rank A dungeon. On the very top floor, it was brought from uncharted territory. Liam apologized, he can only use the rating on the item itself, not on the photo. On Jonathan's orders, the subjects brought a metal suitcase with an artifact inside, placed in glass protection. The item is so highly protected, it looks like it really is an artifact from a rank A dungeon. Otherwise why so much trouble? Then Richard suddenly approached Liam and menacingly put his hand on the table. Then he explained why he was there in order to stop the man if he tried to destroy the artifact. A chill ran down the guy's back. He wasn't planning anything bad, it was time for an assessment. As soon as Liam looked at the object, tears rolled into his eyes. The guy couldn't believe his eyes. Tears rolled down the appraiser's face. Charlotte asked the head what happened to him. The guy was silent. The main character began to wipe his tears with his hand. He was still at a business meeting with a famous guild. Liam asked for forgiveness and said that he had finished the assessment. This rare item contains a recipe for a panacea for all diseases and injuries. This is a recipe for an elixir. All raw materials mainly consist of blood, dark elf, giant leviathan, moon tiger, sigma saber, zero medusa. Apparently to make it, you need to use the blood of all these types. Except for the dark elf. Liam has not heard of the steel types of monsters. Sebastian recognized one of the monsters and told them about the Leviathan. They returned alive after meeting a monster on the very last floor of a rank A dungeon. It was the boss. Leviathan is a sea serpent. Richards is the only one who has defeated him. He is really that strong. Collecting the ingredients would be problematic, but knowing the composition is already enough, the Purple Mist wants to continue collaborating with Liam. The time for the promised reward came. The assistant brought a suitcase with money and showed it to the main character. The guy clenched his hands into fists and said that he didn't need money. Charlotte was shocked by what she heard. Liam continued that he would like to ask for Sebastian Richards instead. Everyone was surprised. The head of the guild stood up and already wanted to refuse, because Sebastian was his strongest seeker of rank A. The head of the guild of the art of analysis said that in the dungeon of the heavenly fortress, there is a dark elf whom he wants to kill, so he will need Richards' help. Once the team defeats the dark elf, the guy will donate his blood to the purple mist. If Sebastian agrees to cooperate, then he will be considered the first to defeat the elf. This proposal interested the seeker of rank A. He is ready to cooperate under such favorable conditions. Just as Jonathan wanted to object, Sebastian interrupted him and said that it was beneficial for the guild to be in partnership with an appraiser, a rare class that could not be replaced by anyone. It was better to earn his favor. Liam decided to warn that four people died during the last expedition. The Dark Elf killed them like insects. Among them were those who first recognized the guy as a seeker, the main character wants to take revenge. He bowed and asked to lend him the power of the Purple Mist. The partners understood the whole situation and agreed to help. Liam stood and waited for the girl. Evans ran up and asked for forgiveness for being late. The main character replied that he himself arrived earlier than the appointed time. The blonde looks quite fashionable in casual clothes. The young people went to one place. Evans asked where they were going. The seeker thought they were going on a date, but the young people came to the hospital. Liam clarified that he wanted to introduce his friend to someone. The embarrassed lady asked what the person they wanted to introduce her to was doing here. Liam brought Evans into the intensive care room where Eugenia Kelly, her childhood friend who had not woken up for three years, was lying on the bed. A dark-haired girl lies with a mask on her face as if she's about to wake up and open her eyes. This feeling has been going on for several years. Monster attack three years ago, monsters broke out of the dungeon, killing many people. That day, Liam was in the city. A monster with long claws was destroying the city. The guy was unlucky enough to encounter it, which led to tragedy. The main character stumbled and looked at the monster from the ground, ready to say goodbye to his life. The brave friend could not allow her childhood friend to die in front of her eyes. She bravely stood in front of Liam, protecting him from the monster. She fell into a coma after protecting the main character. Rescuers arrived immediately, but it did not help. They barely saved her life with potions, but Eugenia is still asleep, so Liam became a seeker to save her. The character and Kelly lost their parents that day. Liam does his best to pay his hospital bills and finally has a ray of hope. 
Evans sadly asked why the Seeker brought her here, and why he introduced her to this girl. Liam explained that Eugenia was his first partner after all. He wanted the blonde to know that. Without hesitation, Evans promised that she would definitely collect everything for the elixir. She would try her best, they must hurry up and help Eugenia open her eyes, otherwise the competition would not begin. Soon after this, the time has come to defeat the Dark Elf. Journalists film Karamia and ask her to comment on the situation and share her strategy plan, whether she aims to clear the dungeon completely. Preparations for the expedition were in full swing. In the last purge, the Chalice of a Thousand Swords Guild was unable to reach the lower floors. The head of the Bloody Idols answered tersely that the leader of this expedition was Liam, and all questions were directed to him. On the lower floors of the Heavenly Fortress, the commander explains the cleanup plan. The hall is more than five floors away. First of all, they recruited 100 high-ranking seekers from famous guilds. They will be on hand. This is in order to assess and calculate the elf's range of action, the scale of his magic and the speed of attacks depending on his position. Sebastian decided to clarify what the probability was that the dark elf would steal the seeker's mana, and since the boss could leave the hall, would he attack his assistants? To do this Liam uses the skill of summoning spirit warriors who obey him. They do not have consciousness, but they can use the same skills as the commander. He left one spirit outside to maintain communication. Although the team now has more combat power, this does not change the fact that the seekers do not know the exact number of enemies. Liam will leave that to the angel. Zophilas appeared in enhanced form and promised to carry out any order of his master. The seekers of rank A appreciated this ally. He looks quite strong and has the same rank. There are two plans. First, Evans defeats the Dark Elf with the help of the Divine Beast Arion. Magic attacks against the Serpent are ineffective. It will irritate the enemy, who mainly uses them. But last time, the Elf defeated Arion. Next, Spirit Warriors can use the same skills as Liam, so they can use the copy skill outside, so they can collect all the useful types of spirits. Zophilus can use teleportation. He will transfer the spirit to fight the Elf, and then fight to protect Arion and the other spirits. In the best case, this will all end, but most likely they will all be killed. In this case, Liam came up with a second plan. Most likely the Dark Elf would discover their location using mana. Most likely, he is already on his way to the detachment, trying to finish the job that he could not finish the first time. The leader has the Eagle Gaze skill, which gives excellent vision. He sees where the enemy is approaching from. In the meantime, Sebastian and Karamia will ambush him on his way. Even if this does not defeat him, he will definitely receive damage. At least they will have time to summon Aryan again. Evans felt something was wrong. Aryan had already been defeated by the Dark Elf. Last time it took him much longer. Liam used his Eagle Eye skill to track his opponent's location and determine his trajectory. The Dark Elf wanders the corridors and looks for people there. Now, the leader has a good idea of his physical abilities. The guy ordered Sebastian and Karamia to prepare for battle. The enemy will be here in two and a half minutes. Liam was wrong. No one knew about the existence of the second boss. The girl was on the way to her opponents. The fallen angel teleported to the main character, sensing danger. He covered the owner with his body. The blow. The wall of the door shattered into splinters. The team was not ready for such a turn. They were taken by surprise. The opponents burst into the hall. The elf told his girlfriend that the guy had excellent security, as he had warned before. Impossible. No one could even think that there would be two bosses. The elf noted that the people did not look too strong. Last time they managed to escape. But this will not happen again. The elf is as strong as the elf guy, and she specializes in physical attacks. Liam panicked about what to do now. They can't even escape through teleportation, since Zophilus can only move five floors at a time. The elf was enraged by the people standing in the way. She decided to kill Liam first. The girl concentrated her power in her hand and rushed at her target. The attack was too fast to dodge. Sebastian took the form of an earth dragon and deflected the opponent's blow. He can enhance all kinds of abilities, transforming into various dragons. The earth dragon greatly increases his attack power and defense. The commander was surprised by the power of his ally. Richards asked the leader what the plan was, to flee or fight, in the hope that the guy would quickly decide on a decision. The entire team hoped for a quick, correct decision. They trusted Liam. The head of the Bloody Idols Guild was ready to attack at any second. The brave swordswoman waited for instructions from the head of her guild. She took out her weapon, as usual, protecting the commander. The opponents are incredibly strong. The team was not ready for the fact that there would be two bosses. But retreat was no longer an option. The Seekers had invaded the enemy's territory. Zophilus was worried about his master. 
Having made a difficult but correct decision, the main character gave the order to his squad to destroy the Dark Elves. Zophilas and Karamia must deal with the guy, and Sebastian and Evans must stop the girl. The team went to carry out their orders. They confidently went towards the enemies, while the elves thought about the people who were not there last time, what they might be capable of. The elf admitted in rage that she had failed to kill Liam twice. The girl literally boiled with rage. The guy laughed, because the main character just has good guards. The elf suggested starting the plan and killing all the people in the dungeon. Using his skill, the character assessed the situation and warned Zophilus that the enemy was preparing to use a high-rank fire spell. Teleportation was needed to dodge the attack. The blonde angel covered the team with his large black wings and moved the guys to another place in the hall on the orders of his master. The fiery attack shot into the void with incredible power. The team was lucky that Zophilus was able to protect them. It is not known whether the squad could have survived the first-rank spell. Having landed on the floor, the guys exhaled calmly. This time they remained alive. But the heat from the fire spell reached here. The elf is unimaginably strong. Will it be possible to defeat him? The dark guy thought that Liam's abilities were ruining the whole plan. It felt like they were getting better. With the teleportation skill, it was impossible to predict where the team would be next to hit it for sure. Sebastian received the task of covering Evans until she was able to call upon Arion again. We must try to separate the elves people could do nothing against their team attacks. The earthen dragon hit the floor with all its might. The shockwave scattered the slabs all over the area. The elves had to separate to dodge the flying concrete slabs. The elf was indignant. People really think that they can keep their enemies at a distance. This is why elves hate people. They do not understand the natural hierarchy of all creatures. The dark girl swung her leg to hit the dragonoid with a physical attack. In the end, his strength will run out. Then he will be thrown out of the battlefield he cannot defend himself for eternity. Richards repelled the blow, but the attack was too strong. The Dragonoid received an open fracture of the forearm. Blood gushed in different directions, so he would not last long and would quickly break. Something was thrown at Sebastian from behind. A small bottle with green contents crashed into the stony skin of the victim and shattered into pieces, spilling the entire potion on him. Liam collected a supply of healing potions and prudently put them in his inventory. Maybe his assessment skill is slowly increasing, but in terms of physical rank, Liam is at least a pro. The commander informed his ally that Sebastian could count on the leader for treatment. The Dragonoid could not worry and continued to attack his rival. Then Richards teased the girl, which only angered her more. At this time, the head of the Guild of Bloody Idols was fighting the Dark Elf with all her might, using her blood magic, her dark hair spectacularly flying apart during the attack and her gaze expressing complete confidence in her actions. The enemy uses spells too quickly. Zophilus spends all his strength on teleportation to avoid being hit by an attack, and Karemia is powerless against the enemy's strong magical defense. Everything looks pretty bad. First of all, the gap in strength. The squad's attacks on the elves don't work, and everything is only getting worse. One look is enough. The team will definitely lose in a battle of endurance. I wonder if they manage to convince the enemy of this. Liam ordered Zophilus to move everyone except the commander to another floor. He used the copying skill and borrowed the dragonoid's magic. The main character used the dragon's breath. It is a wide-range supersonic wave. Only teleportation will allow him to dodge the blow. The dark elf set up multiple barriers and ordered the girl to stand behind him. But she did not listen. For which she paid, the barriers collapsed with great speed. Blood began to fall to the floor in deafening drops. The elf was seriously injured in the battle. The blow tore off her arm and burned her entire right side. The wounds were too strong. This was the end for her. The elves were always together, just the two of them and no one else. They gave each other the names Sam and Joe. This is the only thing they had, but this was enough to feel happy. The wounded girl fell on the concrete floor. A pool of blood instantly formed around her. The elf crouched down. He could not take his eyes off his only friend. His heart sank with pain and fear. Zophilus teleported back with the team. He begged his owner not to do this to him again and not to act alone. Liam knew that the angel could not resist his orders. Sebastian asked the commander what he could do to neutralize one of the enemies. In this state, they would not be able to fight. Now the tide of the battle had changed. Liam explained that he used his Richard's ability skill. From observations, Sebastian's most powerful attack is the dragon's breath, the distinctive feature of which is the sound. It has such a large range that it can cover the entire floor. Then the main character accumulated enough mana to break through the defense of the Dark Elves. The main thing was not to tell anyone about it, so that the opponents could think that they could survive it. 
The commander asked for forgiveness from the team. He could not risk it. What if someone gave away the plan with their behavior? The Dark Elf carefully hugged his girlfriend and asked why she protected him from the blow, because he is responsible for the defense. The girl apologized. She wanted to save her friend. She must have behaved disgustingly as a human. The Elf noted that this was not so. They have nothing in common with these dirty little people. Looking at the dying Elf, the guy asked if there really was no end to the stupidity of people. If the Elves killed them, they would continue to enjoy their world. But people came to the dungeon just to finish them off. The Elf was angry that people were hiding behind, killing for the sake of resources or civilization. But in fact, all this is just to satisfy your desires. Karamia ordered the Dark One to be silent. She noticed that the monsters that escaped from the dungeons took many lives, and the elf also killed four of her comrades. She is here for them. This means that they are in the same boat. There is no more reason to fight. They kill because they interfere with each other. After which the Dark One warned the squad that if they kill him, then humanity will have no future. The elves killed for the good of people. They stopped them. No matter how stupid people acted, the Dark One asked his friend if she was ready. Liam, using his assessment skill, realized that something bad was coming. He ordered the squad to attack with all their might. Everything would be terrible if they allowed the elves to do their plan. A blinding amount of mana burst out from the enemy's side. The assessment did not show where it was coming from. We must be careful. We must rethink everything and come up with a new plan. The fallen angel desperately rushes to protect Liam with his body. His body is torn into pieces. Zophilus, in despair asked his owner to escape as quickly as possible. The angel disappeared into the air, leaving only a few black feathers falling to the floor that fell from his beautiful wings. There was no time to mourn his comrade. Karamia pulled Liam out of shock and ordered him to hurry up and use his assessment of what was happening. Evans, captured by horror, dropped her sword. The Dark One took on his true appearance. His mana filled the entire floor of the dungeon. His long blonde hair fell to the floor and four barely noticeable wings adorned his back. The elf asked how those who had not even conquered the dungeons of the Archangel could think that they could pass the dungeons of the rank of Seraph. Apparently, two angels united into this creature. The entire squad was waiting for the commander's assessment, but he saw nothing. The characteristics of the Seraph are not subject to the evaluator's skill. The elf explained that magic does not work on gods, it is obvious that Liam's abilities will not work on an elf because he is a divine creature. Seraphim asked if the main character now understands the difference between them. If he realized how helpless and arrogant he is now, the creature decided to show the difference in strength between them. The elf used the call of divine hands. Liam realized that the Seraph was attuned to him. The main character can still use the observation skill, but it takes time to dodge. The character was sure that he would not be able to avoid the deity's blow. The blow passed right in front of Liam's face, but did not hurt him. The Dragonoid's bloody hand fell to the floor, spilling vital red liquid onto the white tiles. Sebastian sacrificed his hand to protect his commander, barely made it in time. Good reaction, but there are no scales that could withstand the enemy's divine sword. Evans summoned divine weapons and rushed to attack the Seraph, otherwise the enemy would have deprived the Dragonoid of another body part. The girl was able to withstand the blow of the deity. Evans promised long ago to protect Liam and must keep her promise. The main character could neither assess the enemy nor predict his movements. The guy does not understand what is happening. Liam began to consider himself a burden, because his comrades are forced to protect him again and again, and Zophilas at all. When suddenly a familiar voice was heard in the corridor, the angel asked for forgiveness to his master. Zophilas could not use the teleport in time, so he had to sacrifice his physical body. He must wait before he could appear again. Liam breathed a sigh of relief. His friend is alive. This means that the team still has a chance to win. As long as the squad has Zophila's teleportation, they can use a backup plan. Sebastian noticed that the leader perked up. The main character remembered the serious injury of his comrade in arms. He urgently needed to heal him. But Richards asked the commander not to worry about this. Sebastian took the form of a dragonoid. The earth dragon grew back his lost arm. It was because of this ability that Sebastian boldly rushed to defend the head of the art of analysis. Regeneration allows him not to be afraid of losing limbs. Liam was surprised by his comrade's incredible ability. Is he really immortal? Richards explained that this ability is like regeneration in lizards, but he cannot use it all the time. So now, he will fight at full strength. The Dragonoid boldly rushed into battle. 
he grabbed the enemy by the sword to prevent him from using it and depriving Sebastian of his limb again. There followed two blows directly to the chest. Blood gushed like a river from Richards's body. He was just getting ready to win when the fight suddenly ended. Now this is not his battle. The head of the Guild of Bloody Idols created a sword from blood and attacked the enemy from behind. This maneuver did not give the girl an advantage. The Seraph knew about the approach of her rival and turned to her in time. The enemy so unexpectedly repulsed Karamiya's attack that she did not have time to defend herself from a new blow. The sword pierced the body of the brave seeker. Now she too cannot continue the battle. Karamiya fell to the floor. The enemy sympathized with the squad. It was probably hard for them to be so pathetic, after which the Seraph began to use a spell to finish off the wounded enemies. Evans used the call of the Divine Serpent Orion. The giant white beast bent over the enemy, preparing to attack him. At the moment when the Seraph was distracted by a new threat, the girl attacked the enemy with her divine sword. However, the enemy foresaw this step and managed to dodge the blow. The elf quickly dealt with Arayan and began to fight with the brave Seeker. He skillfully repelled each of her blows as if it was absolutely no difficulty for him. It seems that now only Evans can fight. If everything continues like this, then the squad will lose. Liam has the only option left with which to defeat the Seraph. The main character came up with this plan, in case the assessment does not work on the enemy. Victory with this plan is guaranteed. But in this case, not it will be possible to obtain the blood of a Dark Elf. With Plan B, the team can defeat the Seraph and everyone will live. But the reason Liam went this far is all for Kelly. If Liam abandons his squad and uses Zophila's teleportation, he can try again. The commander's thoughts were interrupted by Evans. The Seeker knew what the head of the guild was thinking about, and said that she would try to defeat the Dark Elf. The girl forbade Liam to even think about this plan. The blonde was too distracted and missed the enemy's blow. Her sword flew to the side. Now the girl is defenseless and cannot fight. She reproached herself for being distracted and now unable to resist the Seraph. The Dark Elf was delighted. Now only the most useless of the people remained. The enemy character guessed that Liam had some kind of plan. But why hadn't he applied it yet? Evans begged the leader not to use Plan B, because she could still fight. Although she had little strength left, the girl knew how important the mission was for the guy to get the blood of a Dark Elf. This is the only option to bring Eugenia back to life. Liam looked at his defender with gratitude. She rushes into battle so fearlessly, despite the fact that the enemy is much stronger than her. The guy was glad that he met such a brave girl. The blonde realized that she would no longer have to fight and risk her life. Two comrades were already seriously wounded. The commander could not put his girlfriend at risk. Earlier, when Sebastian and Karamia were in service, the team had a chance to win. But now the chances are zero. Liam thanked the girl for her willingness to fight to the end for the opportunity to create an elixir for all diseases and save the person dear to him. But the leader did not intend to lose his team, so he called upon the spirits of warriors. Seraphim laughed, because spirits are not stronger than a useless person. No matter how many weak copies of the main character there are, from one powerful spell all the spirits will immediately fall, never being useful in battle. Liam is confident in his actions. This is the last trump card in his sleeve, but it is not as harmless as it might seem at first glance. More and more spirits began to appear from the vault. Warriors can use the same skills as the main character. At the moment the storage volume is equal to an entire stadium, so the commander placed modern weapons there. Usually it is useless in a dungeon. Magic is not only superior in firepower, but also safer to use. But Liam intends to destroy the entire dungeon, along with the Dark Elf. The Seraph was not prepared for such a turn of events. This idea was so absurd that it could not even occur to the elf. The commander called Zophilas, taking Evans in his arms. She was terribly weak after the battle. Liam ordered the spirits to kill the enemy and destroy the entire dungeon. Since the team cannot defeat the Seraph with magic, then destroying the dungeon, making it a grave for the Dark Elf, is very much within the power of humans. Hundreds of projectiles were fired at the enemy with a deafening noise. A fiery cloud filled the dungeon floor. Soon the heavenly fortress would cease to exist. Zophilus first moved the team to another floor, and then outside, Liam mentally asked Eugenia for forgiveness. Apparently she would have to wait some more time. He was born into the Elven long before the advent of humanity. The Elves were famous for their longevity. Thousands of years must pass before a creature reaches adulthood. The Elves had snow-white skin and beautiful golden hair. The population lived their quiet, ordinary life. Women kept house and raised children. 
Men hunted and obtained food. He was different from ordinary elves. His skin was black, his hair was white, and it was impossible to say for sure whether he was a man or a woman. He was not given a name at birth. His parents disowned their child. What was more important? He had a huge reserve of mana. He was disgusting to the other elves, and when they kicked him out of the village, they called the creature a dark elf. He had to wander the world alone. After all, he was used to discrimination in his traveling lifestyle. He only cared about one thing. The little elf was so lonely. He spent his entire short life alone with himself. One day the thought came to him that loneliness could be stopped. The elf just needed to stop being united. So, using the unique magic of the Dark Elves, he divided himself into two creatures, a man and a woman. Everything is fine as long as they have each other. They were not afraid of any troubles, and loneliness is long in the forgotten past. Together, hand in hand, they lived their peaceful, quiet life of Dark Elves. And so people came into the dungeon and disturbed this peace. Separating two inseparable elves, the dungeon fell into chaos. The ceiling collapsed to the floor. Raising up the age-old dust, the Seraphim was defeated. He can no longer heal himself in time. The Dark Elf turned out to be powerless against modern weapons. This is the history of mankind. People are such stupid creatures. They themselves called for their destruction. Someday they will realize this and fall into despair. And now, after countless centuries, the Dark Elf is so lonely again. The people outside were in a panic. They did not understand why everything was shaking. Was it really coming from the dungeon? Then they noticed that the squad had returned back alive and without losses. The squad leader walked in front. Evan supported Karamia behind, helping her walk. The head of the bloody idols held her wound on her stomach with her hand. Sebastian walked as if nothing had happened. He tried to hide from people the pain from the Seraph blades and the failure of his secret mission to collect blood of a dark angel. Liam reported that the boss was defeated. The healers immediately rushed to help the victims. Liam asked to cure them as soon as possible. The girl led the wounded to the ambulance station. A joyful voice was heard from behind. He was glad that the heroes were back. The guy was embarrassed. He did not consider himself a hero. He was just getting in the way. In front of the commander stood a young dark-haired man, Cedric White, the guild master of the Chalice of a Thousand Swords and an A-rank seeker. Liam called him because Cedric is strong but the man refused. He preferred not to fight the Dark Elf directly, so the main character put him in charge of defense bases. The head of the Chalice of a Thousand Swords Guild grabbed Liam by the cheeks, which clearly caused bewilderment in the guy. No one had ever treated him like that before. Such behavior is unacceptable for a guild leader. While the main character was confused, Cedric began to lecture Liam. If he was smart, he would have behaved more boldly in front of the crowd. Does the commander really want to make the people who followed him regret this decision? The guy won, because he was there. White advised Liam to have a good rest and leave the cleaning up after the destruction of the dungeon to him. The main character warned that if Cedric ran away with the loot, the interlocutor interrupted that he knew everything perfectly well and advised the guy to trust people at least a little. Now is not the time for depression. There is a lot that the character needs to do and think about. There was a commotion behind him, an urgent message, a young man was running across the entire base and shouting about a terrible incident.